Man, what is going on, guys? I'm back with another episode of a TV movie podcast. And today I got for you Big Brother Canada 9, episode 18. Last episode, Spicy B was voted out. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to miss her. I like her. I really like her. But anyway, uh, let me not get carried away. Uh, we start off this episode. We see that Kiefer admits to his alliance members that he knew about Spicy V being the invisible HOH soon after she won it, about 20 minutes after she won it, she told Kiefer that she won the power. And he also said to Spicy V to not target Ty and Jed because she was thinking about doing that. Instead, go after Brayden and Austin, which she did. And he did this to like get it off his chest to tell his alliance members and he leaves and he celebrates in the bathroom talks to himself saying yes loyal Kiefer I am loyal who's loyal this guy and there's like three mirrors so he's looking at himself and he says who's loyal this guy and there's another mirror so he's like who else is loyal you bet it's also this guy and while he's doing that his alliance members are you know questioning the information that he brought to them basically saying yo how come he didn't tell this information to us sooner why do you wait until spicy v left things aren't adding up and i feel like Kiefer made a mistake by telling his alliance members that he knew this whole time and they're just think they're looking at him differently now so would they decide to target him time will tell but we get to this hoh competition and this competition is basically a physical competition. You gotta go inside the ball pit. You gotta look for these white balls and then you gotta pick them and put them inside your tube and whoever fills up the most uh, wins. So we see that uh, Tara is running behind very quickly and she decides to quit because she doesn't see the point in running back and forth when it's almost impossible for her to catch up. So she says, you know, it's four against one. How am I supposed to win? You know, she basically throws in the towel and blames it on the fact that she has to go against the Sunsetters. But I feel like she, this competition isn't what she's talking about. She's just talking about the whole game where she, she felt like it's her against a, a whole alliance. Because this alliance, I mean, this competition is kind of individual. And plus, the Sunsetters weren't really talking to each other and helping each other out. So it, she can't possibly be talking about she lost this competition because she had people working against her. Like, no, everybody worked individually. So I think she's talking about the game as a whole, but she calls everybody cowards, right? She calls everybody in the Alliance cowards saying, you guys are cowards. You know, you guys can't go to the end by yourself. And she even goes as far as saying, this person has my vote. And she points at Jed's tube because Jed is the one with the most uh, balls filled up. So she's saying Jed has her vote at the end and Jed does win the HOH and she gives Jed his kudos while calling everybody else cowards. And even Kiefer takes offense to it and he's not even competing in this competition. He's saying, yo, don't call me a coward, Tara. I, I'm, not even, I'm not even playing in this game, in this, uh, in this uh, competition right now. And, you know, so I feel like Tara, I understand her frustration, but first of all, you're going into this competition feeling like you're, you're you already lost because for whatever reason you think it's you against a whole alliance. But you could also have Tara or Tina on your side too, and then you could maybe also try to get Brayden to see the light as well. So it's not over. And she just went to this competition thinking it was over and that's why she performed very badly and she has no one but to blame but herself for losing this hoh competition and she shouldn't be name calling people and calling them cowards because this is honestly like the first time she's really felt the heat you know other than last week like she's saying how she had to fight this whole game but you played the middle the whole entire game like people like rohan hell even Kiefer from 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 uh from the jump had to keep fighting to get into the position that they were in but you didn't really see any heat until now so I don't really like this energy that she's giving off saying like yo I had to like I had to go against this alliance no you you were playing both sides as well so 
it, it, you wouldn't even be in this position if you drew the line in the sand earlier and formed a legit alliance that went against them and and like she kind of played both sides with the oddballs alliance and didn't really you know really go super hard with them and try to take out ty and jed when they had the shot and they and then now she's in this position because she never took that shot so you have no one but to blame yourself you shouldn't call anybody cowards you know what i'm saying like you like you, i don't know man it's just i just kind of i didn't like that part but yeah we see that beth is talking to ty and jed and saying how Braden. You know, she doesn't. She's Braden's kind of getting it on her nerves lately because Braden is not really, you know, giving information to them. She's just he's just collecting information and keeping it for himself. So, they're they want us. They're thinking about targeting Tara, but Braden has also popped up, and Kiefer tells Tina this because I feel like Kiefer and Tina are very close, and Kiefer doesn't really want to see Tina leave. So tells Tina that, yo, go talk to, you know, Jed and try to, like, push Brayden to go up on the block, which she does. Um, and uh, we see Tara talk to Jed as well to try to get the scent off her. But obviously she's the main target this week. But Tara tells Jed instead of Brayden, she tells Tina that, yo, Tina is somebody that could go up on the block because nobody said her name and she could go all the way to the end since she's easy to beat. So we're seeing two different sides here. We see Tina throw Brayden under the bus and not Tara, who's her number one, but Tara throws Tina under the bus, who's her number one. So it kind of just shows you, you know, the type of game Tara is playing like she's willing to do whatever it takes to not go up on the block you know so t like Tara is fighting hard but at the same time you should have fought harder for that HOH to, to prevent all this from happening and uh, I feel like trying to put, you know throw your number one ally under the bus is really solidifying the fact that you will be going against an alliance of four people by yourself because she was saying that you know, during the HOH competition, I was four against one when really she still had Tina with her. But now if you throw Tina under the bus and they get rid of Tina, now it will really be four against one. So you might just get your wish, T Tara. But uh, yeah, the Sunsetters Alliance talk to each other about, you know, if Tara or Tina, you know, end up on the block and win veto, would it be crazy to backdoor Kiefer? And they they decide that might that might not sound that too crazy because it'd be hard to get rid of Kiefer as the season comes to a close because Kiefer has won multiple competitions including an, a, an HOH and I think he won two HOHs you know the one in the double eviction and the one that got out um uh, uh uh austin right so yeah keeper has won two hohs so they're contemplating that but i feel like for beth's game getting out Kiefer this week would be horrible because you need someone like Kiefer in the game to go against ty and jed who she said is impossible to beat at the end so getting out Kiefer just only helps ty and jed and it doesn't help you get out ty and jed because i feel like Kiefer is the only one in that alliance that would actually make that move against Ty and Jed other than Beth, who, she, who Beth said that she wanted Ty and Jed out. So if you get out, the only other person that would make that move with you, you're just ensuring that that move won't even happen. So uh, at the end of the day, we see Jed put up T Tina and Tara up on the block. And uh, yeah, these are good nominations for the Sunsetters, but it's not good if Beth wants, it, it's not good if, Kiefer ends up on the block for Beth's game because Beth wants to get out Ty and Jed and she can't do it like I said if Kiefer ends up going home this week and I don't think she realizes it that yet she doesn't realize it yet so if if she does kudos to her but if she doesn't it, it's going to be too late and she, it won't she won't be able to make that move so yeah it's going to be interesting to watch what happens this week and uh I'll see you guys on the next episode guys thank you for listening and watching the TV and movie podcast I'll see you in the next episode Bless up. Peace.